and Craig Smoke. All right, here we go. This 5 o'clock hour, Dean Blevins, former Oklahoma quarterback. He also lettered at the same time in basketball, part of News 9 in Oklahoma City, and also is the one that hosts a show every weekend with Lincoln Riley. I watched it on Sunday evening and part of his own talk show right after this of the Sports Animal. Dean, thanks for your time. We appreciate that. Lincoln Riley, I believe today, mentioned that he had given Spencer Rattler the day off yesterday. Was that just to help him clear his head, or, or uh, is that something that makes sense to you? You know, when I um, – first of all, it's good to be with you guys. I know there's a lot of excitement around there as well as there there is here, especially after Oklahoma just got the commitment of a, a fabulous uh, defensive lineman here a few minutes ago and Brown loved Dindy. But in terms of uh, his handling of Rattler, um, it makes sense to me and looking back on it, I, I know Lincoln extremely well and the words that his assistant coaches told me when he took over as the head coach, I, I asked every one of them that had been with him for a long time, I said, tell me about him. And they all started with the same thing. They said, brilliant. And they said, no, I don't mean just brilliant, just beyond brilliant. And it's one thing to be brilliant, but it's another to be practical about it. And I think Lincoln Riley has a tremendous uh, ability to communicate um, to kids of this age, but at the same time, draw up plays that nobody else has drawn up. And so I think this was an example of, I hadn't thought of it, but heck, why not give him a day off? You know, the kid's in turmoil and you know that they will have had a, a lengthy a meeting uh, to discuss his options, um, which uh, he said today made a lot of sense for a quarterback to stick around because what are you going to do? Go somewhere else and not be able to do anything. Uh, I think Lincoln would expect him to transfer after the year, uh, assuming he doesn't go to the NFL. But I think it makes a lot of sense. And uh, I, I imagine this is going to be a very tough, um, on the outside, it's at least looking in, it seems to be a very tough challenge for Lincoln and those quarterbacks. But uh, if anybody can make it uh, a smooth transition, it'll be Lincoln, and I, I bet he does. Is it now Caleb Williams' job to lose? Yeah. Now, there's there's no decision. You know, that decision was made on the football field, and, and I don't know if you guys had a chance to to, to see the reactions from teammates, uh, not to mention the fans, but the Caleb Williams uh, uh, confidence that the teammates have in him, the like, the affability, the, the respect they have for him. I'm not going to jump on here today and start bashing uh, Spencer Rattler, but I, but I will say that I've challenged him uh, all this season for not being the, the typical quarterback leader that you normally have. And I put it on lack of leadership on both sides of the Oklahoma football for not having them play with any type of edge that you guys know you've got to play with. And because you don't have that leadership, it, it was more selfish, frankly, uh, from, from Spencer than it needed to be as teammates saw that. And all of a sudden they got this young fresh kid here who is an absolute phenom that lifts, lifts all boats and the change in the crowd reaction. You know, I, I've been to that game or played in it or reported on it for 49 years. And I've never seen either side in orange or uh, red crimson respond the way that that crowd did. And that's what lifted that, that defense and offense, but mostly defensive performance in that second half. I think now the momentum, uh, the confidence they have with a new popular guy will help them fill that void that was there uh, with, with the uh, lack of uh, appropriate leadership uh, under Spencer Wright, or Rattler. And I think that that will be a motivating factor that will put them playing with an edge that at least gives them a chance to make a run. Dean, as you mentioned, you, you've had a lot of history with the Red River rivalry over the, the years, but just how insane was that game on Saturday in terms of, of the, all the classics that you've seen? I mean, where does that one rank in, in sort of the immediate aftermath? Well, I don't like this, uh, you know, latest is the greatest. And so, I mean, I'm an old buddy, Duddy, and I like to go back and talk about the 60s and 70s and 80s. But, but I, you know, it, it was phenomenal. It was just an unbelievable scene. Of course, when your team wins, it's always 
going to be the greatest game ever. I mean, Texas people would tell you it's the worst ever. But um, it tops last year, which was a four-overtime thriller. Um, and, and I think it's as good a game in, in that rivalry as, as I've ever seen because Oklahoma was on the ropes. Um, and I'll take you back to fourth and one, Caleb Williams' first play in that game. Everyone's mouth jaw dropped when Lincoln ran him out there, and it's fourth and one on about their own 35. And so down 21, and he makes that play. If he doesn't make the first down there, the game's over. And he, there was actually a bust on the play. Two guys were in the gap, the, the, the free defender and the one who beat OU, OU's blocking. He had to make two guys miss him just to pick up the first down. And so that's what uh, ignited the thing. And then his popularity and just sensational ability got the crowd to a level that we can sit here now and say that, uh, yeah, that was probably the greatest ever for sure in the OU Texas series. I watched that play probably a hundred times. I still have no idea how Texas didn't stop him. I mean, just an incredible yeah. job by, by Caleb Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he does that uh, routinely. I've got a buddy. Well, it's Jim Donnan. You, you guys know of Jim Donnan. He was the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma under Coach Switzer for a while and then went on, of course, was at Georgia. He still lives down there. Jim's a great guy, but and he calls it like it is. He told me uh, two or three weeks ago that um, he showed me a tweet that he had put out that said that he predicted that Caleb Williams would take over this job sometime this season, which is stunning. But what led him to write that tweet that was that he had seen him in, in camp and he said of all of the quarterbacks he's ever seen or worked with in camps Caleb Williams is the second best he's ever seen and he was talking about Stafford that that did go to Georgia as the greatest so that's the type of, of player we're talking about but it's more than player guys Spencer Rattler was the the Heisman favorite preseason all-american projected number one guy because he has pure talent and this kid is able to come along as a true freshman and beat him out. It, it's unbelievable. That's yeah, how good he is. It, it really is. It, it's, it's an incredible story. And, and, and the fact that it doesn't seem like anything uh, forced him to blink whatsoever. Uh, that game, obviously, Oklahoma, there's been warts because of they didn't win by enough here. They didn't do this and that. They also are missing the big play, and that is something that Caleb Williams has brought to the table, not only with his legs, but also with passes, whether it's Mims or Kennedy Brooks getting now open in the running game. How much is that factored into this as well, Dean? Well, it's, it's massive because, you know, the, the Oklahoma, since Stoops got here, has been an explosive team, and I'm sure your, your listeners know that that means you know, 20 yards or more. Some people define it as 15, some at 25. It's basically 20 yards or more. Oklahoma may have had more explosive plays in the past couple of decades than anyone, certainly since Lincoln Riley's been at Oklahoma. That's a staple. And it was, guys, it was crazy watching this offense perform. And whether it was the offensive line or bust or whatever, they weren't making any explosive plays. And you have to do it if you want to, especially when your defense is a little banged up and not playing anywhere close to what we thought they might, uh, we thought they would. Um, so I, I'm completely with you. I, I Not only did you have explosive plays in the run, uh, pass game, you had them in the run game, and then you have the quarterback making them in the run game. So I think that will increase remarkably, um, and it'll be a big deal. Dean, would it be fair to say that if if Spencer Rattler is ever going to start at quarterback at Oklahoma again, he would have to maybe do as much work on his interpersonal relationships with a team as he would on the field and getting better, and that maybe Caleb Williams can reach them on their level, maybe a little bit better? You know, I think that's a great question, and, and I would agree with it, but I'll play devil's advocate and just say that the only way I see him playing again is if Caleb gets hurt or situationally it's just something that has to happen. Now, now, if he has this great attitude and things turn 180 degrees around, and you know what I'm saying, 180 yeah. degrees mm -hmm. around with what you're talking about, um, then, you know, he'll, he'll be available and, and could do that because he's phenomenal at some things. But, um, 
And, you know, I was the starting quarterback in Oklahoma, got hurt before the Texas game, lost my job, but I still was able to keep a great attitude for winning all the sprints and every practice and all that, you know, just to, to keep a good attitude. And I ended up making really big game-deciding plays in two or three games the rest of my career. Not to pat myself on the back. This is to tell you what Rattler needs to do and what they expect him to do. And the question is, exactly as you phrased it, can he do those things to allow himself a chance to get back on the field? Yeah, that that's going to be interesting. It's one thing to say, yeah. one thing to maybe even agree to, okay, yeah, it's one thing. But it's a physical game. I hope nothing ever happens to Caleb Williams, but you never know uh, about that as well. So you also lettered in basketball. Baylor's had a few yeah. guys go basketball to football, which is a crazy transition. But you did both, and that's so rare these days. How difficult was that on your uh, juggling your time? It, it was unbelievable. I had to carve out some social time, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so when you start to looking at a, at a day, day in the life of, uh, that social time is going to be there. But other than that, every minute was consumed basically with sports. I would make some, some school to, 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 to be eligible. I actually had a four point that semester, but I would make sure and get school done. But it was guys, it was incredible. I would, uh, I would go, I would be in the football room um, as a backup at that time to Steve Davis on our national championships teams in 74, 75. This was the 74, 75 basketball season. So I'd be in meetings all day until the basketball practice would begin at two thirty go over for three hours and practice until, say, 5.15, jump on a bike, and then go to the, the football practice, jump in the shower to, to wake it off. I mean, that basketball practices are hard. And I would walk down the ramp with teammates after having done all that to go out on the field. And back then, you had a million players and no time constraints, and Switzer would work us for three or four hours. So I was doing seven hours uh, a day. It was incredibly difficult, and what made it more challenging for me, for what it's worth, I was playing at a football weight that Switzer pumped me up to as a freshman to, to play wishbone quarterback that was about 20, 25 pounds heavier than what I needed to be in basketball, so that uh, kept me from, from reaching my goals. But he comes to me the next, this, uh, next uh, year uh, and says, hey, I know I told you and your family you could play basketball, um, but – you you got to quit. If you do, you'll be my starting quarterback. And as much as I love basketball, you certainly couldn't turn that down. Yeah, no question about it. And playing for Switzer, we've had him on numerous times. What a what a oh we, good oh my good. god. We need to have Dean on just to talk Barry Switzer for yeah. you know, over thirty <laughs> oh minutes. We, yeah, we'll, we could do that because we're on the internet as well, yeah. Dean. So you can say whatever you want because he sure does. We could do sure. one of those roundtables with a bunch of <laughs> XOU players and just tell us your favorite yeah. Barry stories. Yeah, I, I know you got. I'll, I'll tell you this. Yeah. No one has been with him any more. Well, I'll just say I've been with him a ton, <laughs> including his years in Dallas when I was um, down there hosting Jerry oh, yeah. Jones shows and all that. And, and so I was riding around on team buses and all this. I was on the inside. Um, and some of them I may not be able to tell, but Coach and I have had a unique uh, relationship, which was very, very strange when Thomas Lott, came in and took my position through injury um and so it, it uh it was lively it was lively but uh, i'm glad to have i'm glad someone in texas has barry switzer oh. on so you can see who the guy is oh no and i always enjoyed it we've had him on many many times great stories that we've told about him and what he's done to give back as well dean i know you yeah. got to do your show uh and and think we'll, we'll definitely get you on again to just talk barry yeah. switzer okay yeah. Thank yeah, you very much. You guys sound uh, hey, you guys sound great. Call me anytime. I'd love to help. Yes, sir. That's yeah. Dean Blevins, former Oklahoma quarterback, and also now News Nine, and has his own talk show on the Sports Animal, and does host the Lincoln Riley Weekly Show uh, on Sunday evenings. I watched the one Sunday. It was uh, it was of course amazing the way that comeback happened Saturday. Yeah, I mean it, it was incredible, and you know I'm very curious to see what happens with Spencer Rattler. I mean. Just general consensus feels like he's probably going to, you know, mm -hmm. go somewhere else or go to the NFL. Um, but, you know, just hopefully if that's the case, then Caleb Williams stays healthy. I mean, he, he seems to be the guy now. And, 
you know, there's just there's always been something just kind of off about Rattler in comparison to to the run that they had. Now, granted, it's a little unfair to compare him to Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield yeah. and uh, uh, who am I missing? I'm missing Jalen Hurts. Uh, Jalen Hurts. You know, those guys at all – been under different circumstances. I mean, it came from other programs. You know, their their early years were all at different schools. And, you know, in the case of, uh, of a Hertz especially, I mean, he was – had a full career at Alabama. So it was going to be a little bit different when you had a true freshman quarterback for the first time in quite some time. But, like like I said, like, he, he just rubbed people the wrong way in some cases. Uh, and, you know, he kind of rubbed me the wrong way, honestly, in some ways. Uh, I just couldn't find myself getting behind him and as invested in him as I have been able to do with various other players to know – with no problem. And yeah. there's just something that I just can't be fully on board. And, and I don't know, maybe others feel that too. Maybe players feel that. I don't know. But uh, I'm not well, surprised we are – I'm surprised we are where we are where a five-star quarterback has been benched two years in a row in a big rivalry game and this true freshman comes in and saves the day. Like, all of that's insane. But Spencer Rattler not panning out into a Heisman Trophy winner? No, that does not shock me. Well, and – couple things here i think it would be very wise of him in the long run to stay and, and be the backup and and take some lumps i know that that's not reality in college football necessarily that when you decide to leave you leave because you know, you're not going to be there anymore but I, I think it would i think it would behoove him personally not not even the university of oklahoma i, I mean you know I, I don't think that even about that about the team i think it would behoove him to kind of sit back and learn and then see you know, where, where you went awry, I think that would be good for the next team he's going to be on, whether that's another college team, which now seems really likely because I would not go in the draft if I was him, mm -hmm. you know, with, the, with what you put on tape this, this season. And the NFL scout, Smokey, you say it all the time, they know if you farted in third grade in the middle of the spelling bee, like they'll bring that up. You know, they, they just know it. They know the whole thing. So it's not um, – it, you know, he's, he, I think he just needs to do a little bit of work on that. And, and look, I, I think there's, there's, there's tons of, of, of history behind There's quarterbacks. I'm sure you could go into stories where one guy, maybe he's the best option overall for the team, but he cannot win the hearts of the, the team. And eventually you're going to switch to the other guy you know because the team likes him. You know, what's interesting is even though there were so many that clamored, uh, remember last year's situation at Baylor it was, it was awful, toxic, the quarterback with Charlie, not playing well, the offense doing nothing. Dave Aranda admitted this to me earlier this year. It, it, one of the reasons he stayed with Charlie was because he was worried about the locker room, that they all basically wanted Charlie to remain the quarterback. That doesn't mean there were some that didn't think that others could have been better, but it was one of the reasons why he stuck with Charlie, even though it made at times you're like, why is he not trying to make a move here? Man, but he did banging, that. Yeah. Banging my head against the wall at times last year. Of just, oh. just do something different. Like just... But, but in hindsight, I'm glad that he didn't throw he, Gary Bohannon out there. Yeah, and look where Gary is now. Fresh mind, no no, you know, football PTSD, at least not at least yet. You hope he never does have that. That was so insightful. Yeah. Here's Dean Blevins, who's getting a read on inside not just the Oklahoma locker room, but the decision by Dean, uh, excuse me, by Lincoln Riley to give Rattler a chance to breathe for one day. I do have a piece of calculation.